we need to get this well-used Ender 3 V2 to make identical prints to the new one sent to me from Banggood. They're close, but I think we need to do a little bit better. So let's change out some of the worn parts and see what happens. Last video, we compared my well-used Ender 3 V2 with more than 700 successful prints to this new printer with no prints on it. I was pretty impressed with how well the printer performed, considering that it is printed for about 35% of a year. My goal with this printer is to get it set up to print as close to the new printer as possible, so we can use them both for testing and for improvements. And there are signs of wear on the Z nut, the wheels and the belt, so let's replace them all and see what kind of difference it makes. Banggood sent me these wheels to try out. They are extremely long wearing dry lend type material. And since the wheels below the Y axis are the most worn and carry the most weight, I'm gonna try them here and we can check them out in a future video to see how they're doing. The original wheels look like rubber, but they are actually plastic, specifically Delrin or POM, which is a long wearing hard thermoplastic. Still, they do compress and they wear and that's what we're seeing here. I can't bring myself to throw out the bearings, but I can't think of anything to use them for, so let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. I've also replaced any other wheels showing wear on the X and the Z axis. And a little hack to help you make sure that all the wheels are contacting the frame properly is to mark them with a silver sharpie. It's super easy to over tighten these as well, you should still be able to roll them with your finger. Along with good steppers, belts might just make the biggest difference. I've gone ahead and ordered the Gates GT2 Power Grip belt, which I think might be the best available, but if you know of any better, let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and test them out. The stock belts have these crimped copper ferrules on them, I've reused them for the new belts as well. The Z nut, as you can see, has a lot of backlash in it, and I'm not sure if this is going to have a big impact or not. I do use Z hop on all my prints, and it should at least make the hop upward more precise to the value that I enter in Cura. I've also made sure that both printers are running the same single gear metal extruder and the same PTFE tubing, which is the Capricorn XS high temperature tubing. Just like the last video, I've printed a Benchy on the Banggood printer and the Needit Maker printer using the same blue PETG. I've also printed a calibration cube for both as well. This is the cheapest PETG available and it is really tough to get rid of this fine stringy no matter how long I've dried it in the oven. Switching over to the same gray PLA as the previous video, we've also printed another comparison benchy for both printers. After doing some research, I've read that maybe creating a half twist over the idler wheel could help with these vertically aligned artifacts. So I've twisted the belt and printed another calibration cube on just the needed make it printer. If these artifacts are in the same position regardless of layer and on the same axis as well, that limits the problem to the stepper, the pulley or the belts. We've already replaced the belts and adding that twist should eliminate this as the source. Now the X axis does not have these lines and it does use the same motor, pulley and idler and belt. I have to admit I don't know enough about these motors, but it does seem that the steps on the motor may be causing this. I count 50 turns to 360 degrees, rotating by hand. If I take the circumference of the pulley, which is 37 millimeters, and divide it by 50, we have 0.75 millimeters spacing. My cubes are a little bit too small, but we can set the calipers to 18.5, and I've counted between 25 and 26 lines. So this could very well be the problem. Now this could also be a problem with the voltage being supplied to this motor. Both printers are giving just about identical prints now, and they weren't really that far off before. But there are still a few minor differences. There's a little bit more stringing when printing PETG on the Needed Make It printer. The Needed Make It printer is also showing a little bit more of this vertical banding on the Y axis than the Banggood. And the benchies from the Banggood printer have a slightly more visible line part way up whereas the newest prints from the Need It Make It printer do not. I think we're just about ready to start testing on these printers. I think it would be really helpful to see how fast these printers can reliably print, but if you have some ideas, please write them down in the comments section. Thanks again to Banggood for making these videos possible. I'll have links in the description to their website, 
and they do have sales on often, so please check the links for more info on those. There will also be links to any of the parts that I'm testing shown in the video as well. As always, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care everybody, we'll see you on the next one.